Hensu Pow. Why, hello there, art venturers. In this video, we are going to be going through the structure of drawing a muscular male figure in three quarter view. This is a follow up video from the front view one that I think I was the last video I posted and um, is an overview review video for my art mentorship student. So uh, if you're interested in the art mentorship program, there'll be more info in the description below. Cool. So let's get started. There, I like to start with, I'll, I'll draw the vicar from side view as well because it's important to understand what's happening as far as angles and it's a lot easier to see in side view. So we'll start with the rib cage, which will have this backwards tilting angle like so. And in side view, it's thinner and you can really see that, that backwards tilting angle. The next thing we'll want to do is add the spine, which from side view is going to do something like that. This is the kind of curve of the spine. So we're going to see it sticking out here at the bottom with a little shallow C-shaped curve. And then we're also going to see it up here at the top. Next we can add the pelvis which we'll start by representing as a, a wide oval. But the pelvis also has a tilt to it actually and the tilt is um, counterbalancing that of the of the rib cage. So it's tilting forward a little bit. So how we can represent that is actually with a circle like this which kind of shows the top of it and it's almost like a cutaway which we'll also do on the head as you'll see and then actually let's make this a little bit lower and then we'll have these two lines to indicate where the legs are going to plug in another thing to keep in mind is where your center line is so here I've kind of have my center line right there as you can see and that's just a little bit off center. So I'm actually going to change that because I want to give it a little bit more of a three quarter twist. So I'll put my center line in first, which is usually a helpful practice. So I should have done that up here as well. See how these line up, these two center lines um, complement each other. And then I will add these cutaways, which are also circles but I'm only drawing the uh, inside curve of them. So we'll have those relate to that center line. That looks better. Cool. So next we can start with, we can start working our way down with the legs, but let's put a placeholder here for the head. And this is going to connect to the back of the head. So we'll put an oval here and then we'll, we'll build it out a little later. And then we'll continue working our way down the body and do the leg. So let's start with the back leg. So there's a trick you can do with the back leg in which the back leg here, let's, let's show that over here. So here we've got the head as well. Um, the back leg has this S-shaped curve. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty pronounced, or the, the leg in general does, but from side view you see it. And the back leg here in this figure is mostly seen from side view, as you can see here. It's got a bit of that S-shaped curve. So one trick to do that is to draw the S-shape like this, and then add two straight lines. And that's going to give you the basic, the basic form which then you'll have to refine a little bit to get it looking right. So that's an easy trick to getting the, the leg in there. So let's try that over here. So we've got this curve and then there'll be a, a knee here. So you could actually just even lightly put in a circle there to make sure that you, you don't have the S over here because then the, the trick won't work and the leg will look a little off balance. You want the the um, the second part of the S to be on the other side of a straight line that you would draw here. 
something like that. And then you can draw in that line and then from close to the front of the knee, draw in this. And that's a general principle where these curves versus straights is a really uh, nice aesthetic um, aesthetic thing in art. So like for the, uh, for the, what's it called? For the arms, let's say, you can have a curve here and a straight here for the bicep, you know, a curve here and a straight here for the forearm. And it's a nice way to stylize the, um, you know, the forms of the body. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're drawing in general is looking at a form, look at both sides and see, is there, a, is there a curve straight relationship there that I can emphasize? And then we'll use our um, foot drawing method, which I have a separate video about. So I won't go into too much detail there to put in the foot. And then let's go and move on to the, the other side. And then we'll, we'll kind of fix this leg up a little bit too. So this leg will be sticking a little further back and we'll use the same method as from the front view. Got uh, quite a bird out there. And this leg's gonna go down maybe a little bit further because we're imagining this figure standing on a three dimensional plane and you're looking down at it. So in general, you've got this kind of, we're just kind of thinking roughly about the perspective like this. So of course, oops, sorry. So of course you're looking, you know, down at the feet so you'll see more of the top of it and you're looking kind of more up at the head. Right now I'm kind of drawing the figure from a, um, from the eye line being somewhere around the waist. Uh, a lot of times you'll have the eye line at the eyes because it's like that's where people you know, see the eye line as well. So either way can work for sure, but uh, this I feel is a little more dynamic when you have a lower eye line. Okay, so, so from here, we can just create these tapering shapes or you can actually do it the same way we'll do the forearm, which is drawing in the calf muscle shape and then bringing down uh, two thin lines, tapering lines, and then have the bottom of the heel just a little further down maybe from the other foot. And it's looking pretty much straightforward, so we'll put the circle in front like that and just connect it over. Okay. And then here we can also do that with the with the calf muscle and then the straight lines connecting down. And that'll give you your basic legs. Let's move on to the arms. So we're going to start with the shoulders, which will be elongated um circle like ovals. I mean, but if you're you know, you can also experiment with more circular to get like a, you know, more built out uh, buffer shoulder, but the, the regular kind of muscular, but not overly built out will be kind of like an oval like that. And the arms have a nice like kind of hanging curve to them. So when the, when the arm hangs down like this, it'll kind of have a natural bend at the elbow, not just perfectly straight. That's a little stiff. So we're going to, we're going to have that happen here where we have it come out a little bit like that backwards. And we'll draw the forearm muscle and then these tapering lines and just let's put a circle for now for the hand. And that will give us our basic arm. And then if we want to have it like holding a stick or something, you can place the hand wherever you want and then work your way backwards. You know, that's a, that's a, I think a good way to start to play around with poses. So let's say we want him holding like a stick. We'll say, okay, his hands would be somewhere around here. We know the shoulder is going to be there. So let's see the, 
bicep might be somewhere there. We'll do a circle like that and we'll connect it in. Something like that. All right. Oops. All right. Cool. And then he's got his little spear or staff or whatever it might be. Or he's holding on to a pole on the subway station. Okay, cool. So from here, let's build out the torso and then we'll move on to the head a little bit. And then we'll add a couple of muscles. Um, I didn't talk about, or there's two muscles I want to talk about on the legs. So let's actually just go with that. I don't think I'm going to build out the muscles and the arms too much, but let's just, just uh, hop back to the leg for a second. So the main one is that connecting somewhere around here, there's this like iliac crest. You've got this kind of shape muscle, the quadricep. You're going to have it on both sides. And so that's what it would look like. But if you want to just indicate it, you might just show it right here overlapping. So it's in front of this, uh, I forget if it's adductor or abductor. I think it's abductor muscle is this one in the middle here. And then here you might see it's also overlapping and there might be a little, if it's well developed, you'll see a, a bit of that, um, what do they call it? The, uh, not the head of the muscle, but basically the, the bulge, the, the meat of the muscle down there indicated with like a little C shape. Cool. And then since it's coming down here like that, then behind here, you're going to see a little bit of a glute. And we can just indicate that with the shallow C shape right there. And then down here in the, in the calves, you've got kind of a similar thing where the calves are behind. But instead, in front of it is this, this bone shape. Should I close the door? Let's close the door so that these creatures leave us alone. Okay. It should be a little quieter now. All right. So moving on to the muscles of the upper body. So the first thing we're going to want to do is kind of define where the... Uh, rib cages and the center line should be the center of this this curve this ape this that we're carving out to kind of get that rib cage shape and a little bit above that we're going to have the bottom of the pectoral which to start off with we'll draw a line that follows the form of the of the rib cage so you see if I go all the way around like that but we only want the one in front. So it'll look something like that. But drawing it all the way around can show you how much it might curve, like over here on this side, that it really wraps around the form. And same with here, you know. Cool. So then from here, we can just draw in a line that connects somewhere around the middle of that um, deltoid muscle, the sphere for the deltoid. And we just draw like a shallow, shallow curve there, and a shallow curve here. Now the more muscular the character is, the more it will kind of stick out here. And the apex of the curve is going to be down here at the at the bottom. Because we're creating this kind of a shape. I'm going to make my guy a little less muscular than that and kind of just have a, a slight C-shaped curve like that. Okay. And then we can come down here and from the edge of the rib cage, also coming back to this iliac crest landmark, we can do a, we can connect them like this. And this is showing me actually, I just realizing that the, 
pelvis and the torso are probably a little too far away on this character. But, but let's go ahead and work with it and see, maybe it'll be all right. So we have this, uh, the uh, obliques coming in here. And then we can attach from right around here, a little bit inside that uh, inner rib cage curve. And then connecting down to the bottom of the um, like pelvis area we'll have two lines that are also kind of have a slight, slight outward curve to them. And this is going to outline our um, abdominal muscles. All right, and then you'll see the center line will be down here. And I'll show you how the individual abs would come in on a second layer because it will get messy otherwise. So finding the belly button, that's going to give you an idea of where one, one ab is. And then just kind of cutting the line in half from here, from here to here will give you the second one. And then the bottom, the rest is at the bottom here. And then if you want to give each one its own definition, then you can just give them each that like C-shaped curve like that. For now, I'm gonna go back to just leaving it kind of plain, just indicating it, indicating the structure there. And then the, the, the one of the last things we wanna do here <clears throat> is show the latissimus dorsi, the lats coming in from behind and they're just going to curve in there attaching somewhere from here coming all the way to the lower back like that so we're just going to see a little bit poking out there on the side all right from here we can um, start working on the head and the neck. So let's use the Loomis method idea to give that little, actually first, let's continue to start with that center line to indicate how much we've got the head turning in space. So it's going to match that of the chest and the pelvis. We're gonna keep this figure kind of looking straight forward. Then from there we can Create this cutout here and it's going back behind what I've created because actually we want to make sure that the head has you know the the skull the skull is shaped like that right so this is where your brain sits so we can actually even draw that circle to, to indicate that there's going to be the back of the head there and that actually shows us that the head probably needs to be repositioned because the neck here wants to connect somewhere around there with the back of the head. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and reposition that a little bit right now. Maybe something like that. This is in, in the center. Okay. And then from there, we can use the, we can, cut out the, the side there with a circle. So we're basically taking this, this circle shape here from the front view and just cutting the two edges like that to get the shape of our head. And so once we've done that, we also can come somewhere and then just also remember that the the jawline will come out, come down a little bit, and then come out right from about the middle of that circle, which I haven't actually shown here, but that's okay. And then from there, you can go in and find a point like somewhere right around here and connect down to your to that center line you drew. And that'll give you an idea of the jaw, where that would be. So 
I just want to get that little point out. So let's do it like this. Cool. And then lastly, we'll be adding the, the neck. So finding this point, we already have the center of the chest. It'll actually be a little bit over this direction because this center is, is on the uh, rib cage but it'll connect back to this point in the rib cage, but actually it'll come out a little bit like that. You see, because it's coming out on top of the form a bit. Well, depending on how muscular you are. Actually, no, it'll probably, never mind, because unless you're exceptionally muscular, the, um, the shape of the, the center area will actually be flat. Okay, just ignore that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. So we've got this connecting to, um, we've got the sternocleidomastoid, which is going to connect from here to there. It's this long muscle on your neck, and it's going to taper down a bit. So let's actually go ahead and make this lighter and go to a second layer. So it's going to have a, it's kind of like wide over here and then taper down like that. And then on the other side, it'll do the same, but you're only going to see a slight bit of it coming out like that. So we can go back to our main drawing. Put that in. Oops. And then and a really important thing to remember is that the neck has a curve to it. So the neck is not straight down like that. It is actually curve back like this. So we're going to indicate that here, like that, like that. And the sternocleido is in front. So to go on top of it here so you can see a little more clearly, we could actually, it would probably be better to start with those curve of the neck and then add the sternomasto, sternocleidomastoid on top because that's how it is. It's um, working from, from the back and then building up on top. So we have these two and then this in front like that. It's kind of messy here, but I think you can see well enough. And then finally, we just want to add the trapezius muscle on both sides. This is going to have the S-shaped curve. Actually, I think I want to move this arm a little bit back so we can make adjustments as we go along. And uh, that's basically it. So, you know, I would probably make adjustments like this might want to be a little bit higher, but the basic uh, structure and, you know, this this pelvis is a little bit too too long, as we said. But if you follow this order, you'll get the basic structure, and then from there you can start to refine and figure out what exactly is working, what's not, and just you know through practice it'll it'll become easier and the proportions will come through um, more naturally. Cool. I hope this video has imbued you with just a little bit more. Pencil. Pencil. How? 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 Nice.